Hello everyone, my name is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am bringing you guys my end of February wrap up where I will be talking about all the books that I read from about February 15th to February 28th. As usual, if you want to hear me discuss the books that I read in the first half of the month, my mid-month February wrap up will be linked up in the cards above. Without further ado, let's just get into it. I am going to be talking about the books in the order that I read them. So from about February 15th to February 19th, Blackathon round three was still going on. So the first few books that I'm going to be talking about, I read specifically for that readathon. So the first book that I want to talk about is The Secret Lives of Baba Seji's Wives. This is by Lola Shone Yin. So this is a contemporary literary fiction novel. This takes place in present day Nigeria and it is all about this man Baba Seji and his four wives. They are a polygamist family. And so this is like Nigeria meets polygamy meets Desperate Housewives. It's very much a Nigerian soap opera in book form, basically. And I was here for it. Like the drama, the tea, it was all very interesting. I also learned a lot about Nigerian culture and about women's roles in that culture. So I ended up giving this four stars. I definitely recommend checking it out for yourself. Next book I want to discuss is The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Yonata Petrus. So this is a sapphic YA romance. We love to see it. And I always point this out anytime I bring up this book but isn't the cover absolutely stunning. So this centers around our two main characters. We have Audra who's from Trinidad. She is coming over to the United States to live with her father who lives in Minneapolis. And then we have Mabel who also lives in Minneapolis. And so this is essentially a sweet and beautiful and wholesome and poignant and powerful story about two black girls from very different backgrounds falling in love with one another. There are a couple of things that I wanted to point out about this novel that I didn't know going into it that I do think are useful to know. For one thing, Mabel, one of our main characters, she does end up getting very, very ill. I want to say towards the middle of this book and so at least the entire last half of this centers around her illness essentially. And then also there is a bit of magical realism in this book. I don't want to spoil what that is or anything, but magical realism is usually something that doesn't quite work for me because in my mind of genres you have contemporary and then you have fantasy and magical realism I feel like is smack dab in the middle of those two things. And for some reason it doesn't usually work for me just because it comes off as like kind of ridiculous and unbelievable which is like stupid for someone like me to say because like I just said I read a lot of fantasy and in fantasy novels I don't find it ridiculous but when you put these kind of weird magical elements in a contemporary story I don't know, usually it kind of takes me out of the story and it does affect my enjoyment but I do have to say in the instance of this book I thought that it worked really well. I feel like there's also parts of this book that are going to make you feel like you're high and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I just found it very interesting. So I definitely recommend this. I also gave this four stars. I think it's a really great option if you're looking for a sapphic romance with two black main characters. Next book I want to discuss is Homegoing by Yagyasi. And man, this book is a journey. My goodness. So it's only 300 pages, but this book quite literally covers hundreds and hundreds of years. So we are centering around these two sisters in Ghana. They didn't know that they were sisters and they end up going on completely different paths in their lives. So I believe the beginning of the story takes place in like the mid 1700s. And one of the sisters unfortunately ends up getting enslaved and brought to the Americas on a ship while the other sister stays in Ghana living her life. And so now we are following these two very different branches of this family tree throughout the years. And one thing that I really loved about this book was the characters that Gyasi created. They were really fantastic, complex, and nuanced. I also love how this novel kind of talks about the idea of the individual against the fate of time itself. Now I did give this four stars because I did struggle a bit with the writing. So basically what's going on with this book is that each chapter and they're very long chapters um, covers a different character or, or a different person within this family tree. And so a problem that I had was that some characters and some stories I found to be very intriguing, very interesting, and some characters not so much. I also felt like the pacing was quite slow. This is also definitely, definitely a character-driven book, which I usually really enjoy those, but for some reason the writing style 
just didn't engage me the entire time. There were definitely times where I was zoning out, especially towards the end. Do I recommend this? Definitely for sure. There's a reason why this novel is so popular and I cannot deny that this is easily one of the most epic contemporary literary fiction novels that has been written in our lifetime. So yes, definitely recommend checking this out. Next book that I read for Blackathon was Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. So this is what I would classify to be a light science fiction novel. This centers around our main character Dana. I want to point out that this was written in the 1970s and it takes place in the 1970s in California. So Dana and her husband who is white, they have just moved into this new home but things go awry very quickly at the very beginning of this book. She ends up time traveling to the antebellum south and she has no idea why any of this is happening but right before she's about to get murdered by a white man she blips back to her current timeline. So that's all I'm going to say about the plot because I definitely don't want to spoil any of the revelations that are made early on in the book or anything like that but what I will say about this book is that during the first, I would say like 60% or so, I was so engaged in this story. I really enjoy Butler's writing. It's really, really great. But towards the end, I would say the last 30% or so, I wasn't quite as engaged and I don't think it's the writing. I think it's the plot in general. I just wasn't as interested in where the plot was going and so yeah that's why I ended up giving this one four stars as well. So I highly highly recommend this book. I do want to point out though that if you're someone that needs all of your questions answered at the end of a book you may not like this because we never figure out how exactly Dana time travels or anything like that. We do kind of get answers as to why but the how is definitely still a mystery. So I definitely wanted to point that out for you guys. But yeah, I gave this four stars. It was really great. Okay, so next book I read was Accidentally Compromising the Duke by Stacey Reed. Stacey Reed is a black historical romance author, in case you didn't know. And this, I believe, is book one in an older series of hers, but the premise of this sounded so fun. So we have Adeline, our main character. So this is taking place in 1817, the Regency era in England. And so she wants to marry this man who isn't noble at all. He isn't a duke, a marquis, an earl, anything like that. And so her parents don't approve of that. And so they're trying to marry her off to this other man, I believe. Um, but basically she is trying to force her parents' hand in letting her marry this man that she loves by compromising herself and going into this man's bedchamber late at night. And she orchestrates it so that I think a friend of hers is going to catch them in the act even though she's just gonna like be standing in the bedroom. But she ends up going into the wrong bedroom. She ends up going into Edmund who is the Duke of Wolverton's bedroom. He is known as the Mad Duke. His wife had passed away I believe a couple of years before the book starts. And so because of this whole zany situation now the two of them have to get married. First of all I do want to point out that this book deals heavily with loss of a loved one and loss of a child as Edmund's first wife died during childbirth. And so a lot of this book is pretty angsty because Edmund doesn't want to risk falling in love again or getting Adeline pregnant because he's very afraid that she would succumb to the same fate that his first wife did. And this is a similar situation to Kindred in that I was really engaged in the first like 60% or so but towards the end not so much. I Again, I think the direction the story went in just didn't engage me quite as much as the first half. I will say until the last chunk of this book, I was probably going to give this book five stars because the first half was really fun and entertaining. Also, Edmund's two daughters were just simply adorable and I love when children are done right in romance novels and that's definitely the case here. So even though it wasn't a complete home run for me, I definitely still really enjoyed this book and I also gave this four stars. Next book that I want to talk about and my first five star read that I'm going to talk about in this video is Slay by Brittany Morris. So this is a YA contemporary novel about our main character Kira and she is 17 years old. She goes to this elite private school I believe where she's one of the very few black people that go to the school but she is also the creator of this virtual reality online game called Slay. This is a Nubian themed game that is meant specifically for black people and and it is now like an insanely popular cultural phenomenon and that was one of the things I loved about this book is seeing a young black
black girl create something so amazing and fantastic. Like I wish this game was real just so that I could like go watch YouTube videos of people playing it. I don't know. Like that just sounds so much fun. So some things that I want to point out about this novel, I'm just uh, referring to my Goodreads review by the way. I always link my link tree down in the description below where my Goodreads is linked. So is my Instagram, Twitter, all of that. So definitely check that out if you haven't. But um, I loved the discussions about what it means to be black, gaming culture, respectability politics, and more. I thought that all of these discussions were just invaluable. I certainly learned a thing or two from this book that I wasn't planning to, so I'm also really grateful to Brittany Morris for that. This book also just has so much black girl magic and I'm just so happy to see that more and more in YA contemporaries. Also I do want to point out that this book gets quite serious and dramatic at times because there is an event that happens that has to do with her game Slay. So now Kira is very worried about legal repercussions and things like that. There's also elements of this story that kind of reminded me of The Hate You Give so if you loved that book definitely check this one out as well but yes cannot recommend it enough. I just had such a fun time. The gameplay of Slay itself like had me on the edge of my seat the way that Brittany Morris was describing the battles and things like that. Like it's just so fun. Next up I want to discuss Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. This is also a YA contemporary. This is definitely more on the serious side. So this is about our main character Simone and she was born with HIV and now she is in high school. She is student directing a production of the musical Rent, which if you didn't know that is a very very popular musical from the 90s that is all about these different people living in New York City. A lot of them who are living and unfortunately dying from AIDS because that was very much what was happening in the 90s. And so what's really cool about this book though is that we get to see what it's actually like living with HIV today. I feel like that's not a topic that you hear people talk about very much. So in this book we see that nowadays science and medicine has advanced so much to the point where it is totally possible to live a pretty normal life even if you do have HIV. I would also highly, highly recommend this book if you are into musical theater like I am because not only are we going through this rehearsal process of the production of Rent that she's directing, but also there's just so many fun references to different musicals and you can tell that she truly adores musical theater so much. Um, there's also a really sweet romance with this guy Miles who works backstage on the show and yeah there's some really wholesome and sweet moments but there's also some very heavy and hard-hitting moments as well. So I wholeheartedly recommend this and I ended up giving this four stars. Next up is my third Beverly Jenkins novel that I read in February which we love to see. This was Wild Rain which is book two in her Women Who Dare series. This is her most recent release. I believe this came out on February 9th so just a few weeks ago. And this one is about our main character Spring. She lives in Wyoming. This is after the Civil War. I want to say this is the 1880s is when this takes place. And then there is this man Garrett who comes to town to interview Spring's brother who is a doctor. And so this just ends up being a really sweet and low angst romance between Spring and Garrett. Uh, very typical of Beverly Jenkins novels. The drama doesn't necessarily come from the romance itself. The drama comes from other like outside forces. I just loved that Spring was such a badass. Like she literally like carries a pistol around with her all the time. She's a rancher so she has a farm full of all kinds of different animals. She's also an expert in training horses and Garrett is definitely a cinnamon roll hero. It was really interesting to read Beverly Jenkins author's note for this book because she said that Garrett is her very first cinnamon roll hero which is really great to see uh, because it's cool to see her kind of branch out with the types of characters that she writes. It definitely wasn't my favorite Beverly Jenkins novel ever but it was still really great and I love reading low angst romances like this from time to time. All right next book I want to discuss. This might be a pretty long discussion. Um, this is going to be Legend Born by Tracy Dion. This is book one in a brand new YA urban fantasy series. And so this centers around our main character Brie. Before the book started her mother passed away in a car accident and so she's definitely still reeling from that. A lot of this book has to do with grief but also intergenerational trauma and grief as well which is one of the things that I did really love about this book. But essentially she ends up going to UNC Chapel Hill for their early college program. So she's only like 16 or 17 I think. 
but she's going to college, which is like wild to think about. Like I know me personally, I don't think I would have been ready to go to a program like this when I was 16, but Brie is kind of a badass. Basically her first night on campus, she witnesses this demon attack. These demons come out of nowhere. And then there are these other people that take down the demons and she doesn't know what's going on. Obviously she's very confused. So basically throughout this novel, Brie finds out that there is this secret society of legend born people or mages and their purpose in life is to protect humans from demons because essentially there's these gates that open up all around the world and demons can get through and they try to attack humans. So basically she realizes that there's some kind of connection between her mother's death and this legend born society. And so she decides to try to infiltrate the group and become one of them to try to get answers. Something else I wanna quickly point out about this book is that this is a sort of retelling or reimagining of the King Arthur legend. So I'm gonna be upfront with you guys. I unfortunately struggled a bit with this book. I ended up giving it four stars. <sighs> no one is more sad than me that I didn't love this because when I talked about this book in my February TBR, I told you guys that I was ex fully expecting to love this and give it five stars because literally everyone I follow that has read this book is absolutely obsessed with it and I can totally see why and I wanted to be as well. But ultimately there were a few things that missed the mark a bit for me personally. Um, one, I think the writing style and the pacing overall because there were times throughout this where for one reason or another, I found myself zoning out a bit. I don't know, I'm not quite exactly sure why. I do think that there were parts where this was paced really well, but then there were other parts that I felt like were kind of slow. Also for me personally, I struggled a bit with the world building. I felt like at times it got a bit info dumpy and I'd have to read passages over and over and over again to fully understand what was going on. Also something I've kind of realized about myself is that while I do enjoy dark academia books, and that's definitely what this is, I don't think I'm the biggest fan of secret society books in general and that's totally what this is and so I think that's also another reason why I didn't love this. Also I've never really been into the King Arthur legend so because of all of those reasons that I just listed I definitely don't think this is a bad book and I still enjoyed parts of it. For one thing like I pointed out I loved the discussions about different kinds of grief, um, also oppression and resilience and things like that. I also think that this is a very interesting world and magic system and I'm sure that Dion is going to expand upon that in the subsequent book. So yes I still highly recommend that you check this book out yourself. I think there's some really cool elements going on really great discussions brought up like I said earlier um, I just don't think that it was the book for me personally and that's totally fine all right next book I want to discuss is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah this is a nonfiction memoir written by Trevor Noah who if you don't know he is a very popular comedian he is also the host of the late show on Comedy Central so as it says on the cover it says stories from a South African childhood this memoir is based solely around his childhood growing up in South South Africa. So Trevor Noah was growing up in South Africa in the 90s. So this was around the time that apartheid was coming to an end, but there were still definitely a lot of issues going on in the country. For one thing, something that I got out of this book was that it taught me a lot about what apartheid actually was. This is a topic that I unfortunately have never really educated myself on. If I'm going to be quite honest with you guys, I always assumed that it was just the South African version of segregation, but it is really so much worse than that. My goodness, the things that Trevor talks about in this book, like it's mind blowing. It truly, truly is. So that's one of the things that I loved about this book is just how much it educated me about that topic in general. What's also great about this book is that quite a few of the stories center around his relationship with his mother, which is really cool to see. You can tell that he just loves his mother and respects her so, so much. That is definitely evident in this book. This book is also the epitome of you have no idea what other people are going through. I don't know, it's just so insane to see what his childhood was really like compared to the person that he is today. So I wholeheartedly recommend this. I gave it five stars. Also, I really hope that he ends up writing a memoir about his career because this book really was not about that at all. all right, next up, I quickly want to discuss Succubus Shadows by Rochelle Mead. This is book five in her Succubus Blues or the Georgina Kincaid series. 
I talk about this series all the time. I can't shut up about it. If you want to know what this series is about, definitely check out my video where I talked about my favorite paranormal romances. I will link that up in the cards above. But yeah, this book was pretty much just as fantastic as all the others. Couldn't give this less than five stars. I really love that this book goes more in depth about Georgina's past because Georgina's a succubus who has been alive since like the third century AD. So she's lived quite a long life and we got to see more snippets of what she was like in other centuries and things like that. Cannot recommend this series highly, highly enough and I'm so excited to read the sixth and final book in March. Next up is She Came to Slay. This is The Life and Times of Harriet Tubman by Erica Armstrong Dunbar. And this is a nonfiction biography about Harriet Tubman. This is a very short and sweet book. Really cool about this book is that we get to see some really cool multimedia elements, like here's some different maps. There's a lot of different photographs of Harriet herself, which I didn't even know that many photographs existed of her because she was living in the 1800s. Uh, basically her life spanned from, I wanna say the 1820s, like. I think 1822 to 1913. I didn't know that she lived that long. Um, I mean, my goodness, this book educated me so much about her life. Not only was she a conductor in the Underground Railroad, but she was straight up a Civil War war hero. And like, why don't we ever talk about that? Like, there's just so many things in this book that we need to be talking about in our present day society. And I really hope that the $20 bill that's going to have her likeness happens really soon because my God, does she deserve it? I also loved that the author included a lot of different resources that you can access if you want to educate yourself further, not only about Harriet Tubman, but the time that she was living in and all of that. So yes, I definitely recommend checking her out, especially if you're someone like me who really didn't know that much about her going into this. All right, last but certainly not least, I have two shorter books that I wanna talk about. The first one is Flow by Kennedy Ryan. This is the prequel novella in her grip series. So this is technically a trilogy because we've got Flow and then we have two full-length novels. I think they're called Grip and Still if I'm not mistaken and this is a series that you definitely need to read these books in order. It's basically one romance story that is stretched out into two books and a novella. So this novella is really all about how our two main characters Bristol and Marlon aka Grip first meet. So basically what's going on in this story is that we have Grip who's an up-and-coming rapper and then we have Reeson who is the twin brother to Bristol. Now Bristol I believe she lives in New York City whereas I think they're living in LA so she takes a trip during her college spring break to go visit Reeson. They are definitely estranged even though they are twins so she's trying to kind of make amends with him so she goes to visit him during spring break and Grip ends up being the one who picks her up from the airport and from the moment that their eyes meet there is so much chemistry between these two characters it's absolutely unreal this is also my first kennedy ryan book and i have to say the woman can write <laughs> oh my goodness i was just totally enthralled the entire time even though this was only like a four hour audiobook like i was just totally in it what i also liked about this story is that bristol is white and grip is black and so there were just a lot of open and honest conversations that the two of them had with one another about different racial issues and things like that i thought that that was a really great element to add to the story yeah i mean this is really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of their story so i'm really looking forward to reading the two full-length novels in this trilogy and I couldn't give this less than five stars because it's just beautifully written. There were so many quotes that I had to underline. It was just so so good. All right guys we made it to the very last book that I'm going to be talking about in this wrap up and you know coming to the end of February I knew that I couldn't round out Black History Month without reading a Jason Reynolds novel. Long Way Down is one of my top favorite YA contemporaries of all time. The Jason Reynolds book I decided to go with was The Boy in the Black Suit. Now this one I chose kind of random because the cover of this one has been featured in quite a few of the thumbnails from Ashley from the bookish realm. I will link her channel up in the cards above. I love her channel. I discovered her recently. Um, so yeah, I just kept seeing this cover on her thumbnails and I was like, you know what? That looks really interesting. It's Jason Reynolds. I trust him with my heart, soul, and mind. So yeah, and this definitely didn't disappoint. Had to give it five stars. So this one centers around our main character, Matt. He lives in Brooklyn. And before this book starts, his mother unfortunately passes away, I believe from breast cancer. Now he's definitely still reeling from that loss a lot. And his father is still around. 
but after losing his wife, Matt's mother, um, he is now becoming an alcoholic. So Matt is definitely dealing with a lot. He is trying to get a job to make some extra money. And so this man, Mr. Ray, who lives right across the street from him, offers him a job to work at his funeral home. So Matt ends up working there and he decides to start attending the various funerals that the funeral home puts on. You know, he's very respectful. He just stands in the back. He doesn't talk to anyone. You know, he is just there to see the funerals. And so he essentially starts to find healing from watching these funerals because he's seeing that he's not alone in his extreme grief. And it's a stunning story. My goodness, just talking about this book is making me tear up. It's just so beautiful to see him start to heal. I also feel like Reynolds perfectly captured all the different stages of grief. Um, yes, it's a heavy story and it's very sad at times, but there were also moments where I laughed out loud because Jason Reynolds humor definitely comes through at times. And yeah, I also loved Mr. Ray's character who, like I said, he owns the funeral home. He also ends up becoming a sort of fatherly figure for Matt. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this end of February wrap up. We got through it. I talked about all the books that I needed to. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I would also love it if you would leave a comment below if you want to tell me about some of your favorite reads of February. And and yeah, I would love it if you would leave a like and subscribe. And I thank you in advance if you do. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.